Hello, I hope you're doing well. This is the third video in the optimization series. In this problem, I want to talk about an inscribed rectangle. Well, let's just go right to it. So in this problem, I will have a circle and an inscribed rectangle. Two vertices of the rectangle are on the circle itself, and the other two vertices down here are on the x-axis. What's given in this problem? The radius of this circle is 6. So the question that I have is what value of x yields the largest area for the rectangle? Well, let's do some pre preliminary work first. <laughs> the equation of a circle. Since the equation of the circle is centered at the origin, it's going to be x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. And since I'm dealing with the semicircle, I chose to do the upper half, so that says y is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So one of the things I know I'm going to have is I have two variables in this question. And for the most part, we're always going to have to solve for one of these variables for our optimization techniques. So I'm going to choose to solve for y here. Subtracting x squared from both sides, then taking a square root, I get y equals positive the square root of 36 minus x squared. Why do I exclude the negative? Because I'm just dealing with the upper part of the circle. Now the area of this circle, if I call this point x comma y, then this height is y and this length here is x. But since I have a symmetry in the problem, this length is also x. So the dimensions of this rectangle are 2x by y. So in other words, the area is 2x times y. Now we can also assume that x is positive because we have a nice symmetric system over here. Because if this is x comma y, this will be negative x comma y. And I'll just get a negative answer and it will be perfectly fine. So let's get down into some of the calculations. So what was given in this problem? This is a small little recap. The radius of the circle is 6, so the equation is x squared plus y squared equals 36. Solving for y, I get the square root of 36 minus x squared. And the area is 2x times y. That's in two variables, and that's always going to be a bad thing for us. Using this equation up here, this is called a constraint equation, by the way. I'm going to substitute in for y, so I get 2x times the square root of 36 minus x squared. Now I have a single variable. We're going to have to go through setting the first derivative equal to 0, finding the critical values, using a first derivative test. And I wrote down the conclusion right down here, but I did a lot of this work in Mathematica. So I'm going to pause on the handwritten stuff and go over to Mathematica for just a moment. So looking at Mathematica, if this is the inscribed rectangle problem, the first thing I need to do is enter in the function. So I already did that for us. Remember that you should always clear things out. I am going to use A, capital A, for the name of this function, and it is in one variable. We already determined that the area function should be 2x times the square root of 36 minus x squared. So I will enter this in, a shift enter, and I wind up getting an out two. Now, how do I determine the critical values? Well, the critical values are when, is when the first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. Well, I am gonna first figure out where the first derivative is equal to zero. Setting the first derivative equal to zero, I'm doing it two ways, one once with a solve and the other with an n solve. And now notice that the restriction that I have on here is between zero, zero and six. That's because if I look at my circle, x can't be bigger than six because that was the radius of the circle. So if I evaluate these, I wind up getting three root two and four. 0.24. One's an exact answer and one's an approximation. Now, what makes this thing undefined? Well, that's a little bit harder to do. 
So I'm going to walk you through this in a live fashion. So first I want to type in the derivative and see what it looks like. Well, it looks like this. And I want to simplify this thing, and I wind up getting this very large expression. When is this thing undefined? Well, quotients are undefined when the denominator is equal to 0. When is 36 minus x squared equal to 0? When x is 6 or x equals negative 6. But we already knew then that I couldn't include 6 and x was going to be positive. So I'm not going to have to worry about undefined critical values here. So let's move on. What do I do with this? Well, what I did in, in my piece of paper is I wrote down this 3 root 2. That came directly from our critical value, solving for the first derivative equals 0. Now I have to choose some test values. We've been doing this for a couple weeks now. So going back to Mathematica, I want to choose some test values. Well, I need to pick a value a little bit less than 4.24 and a little bit greater than 4.24. So I chose 1 and 5. And when I evaluate this, I get a positive answer and a negative answer. That's all I need for this problem. So I'm going to transfer this positive and negative onto my piece of paper. A positive answer and a negative answer. This says A is decreasing and A is, sorry, I said that wrong. A is increasing and A is decreasing. So by the first derivative test, I know that I have an increasing, decreasing nature. That's what this says. And it produces a rectangle of maximum area. Now, does this answer my question? What is the value of x that yields the area, the largest area for the rectangle? Well, it's 3 root 2. Now, can I go and figure out what this actual maximum area is? So what is the max area? Well, that's going to be a of 3 root 2. I don't want to do some hand calculations right now, so I'm going to jump back to Mathematica very, very quickly. So what is the max area? So the max area is going to be a of 3 root 2. Oops, if I can hit 3 root 2. I'll evaluate this, and I get 36. An exact number, 36. I will translate this, or rewrite this, on my sheet of paper. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye.